Anthropic uh, Claude 4.5 Sonnet was just announced yesterday, and I think it's something you should consider if you're a teacher, course creator, uh, and it's probably not for the reason that you think. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you the announcement, tell you all the things that you don't need to know. Well, go and take a look at the announcement. I'm going to skim over the stuff that I don't really care about, and I would think that you probably don't if you're in the education space, and we'll focus on some of the things or changes that they're claiming here and why it's important to you as a teacher or really an educational content creator. So we're going to do that. I'll do it as quickly as I can. Uh, and again, my thing here for you is go play around with it. 4.5 is available to everyone now. And again, I'll include all the links here so that you have them. Uh, Claude Sonnet 4.5 is the name. This was rolled out to everyone. Again, uh, that's what they say here on the announcement page. And I want to take a look at three kind of key things here, and then we'll actually get into why it's important. So they had this announcement, and there was all sorts of stuff here making claims like, we're the best at coding model, strongest model for building complex agents and using computers, reasoning, and math. So there's a whole bunch of stuff there that everyone talks about. Uh, and again, here's the ones that kind of have the big announcements here. Uh, here's where it starts here. Uh, we've added new context editing feature and memory tool to Claude API that lets agents run even longer and handle even greater complexity. In the Claude apps, we brought code execution and file creation. I'm talking about all of the stuff that we do while we're actually working, so we can actually run them and actually create files while we're going and doing it. And we've also made the Chrome extension available to max users now. My understanding is that it's coming out uh, for the rest of us shortly. So what does this mean in real terms for us? Well, the first thing is, is that when I look at or when I'm using any of these AI tools, there's generally three that I use. Let me just pull up this just to put it into context a little bit. You know. Uh, Whenever I'm playing around with these, I end up that I use ChatGPT like as a general one. So it's the one that I use kind of when I'm brainstorming or kind of putting together some ideas and trying to think of it that way. Uh, I use Gemini because it's just hidden in everything that I do. But I find for business work where I'm doing customer facing or student facing things, where I'm actually creating a work product, I find that I use Claude for one important reason, because it just sounds a little bit more like something a real person would write in terms of the language it uses and the structure and the way it things done. So from the coding perspective, apparently it's the best thing since slight spread. I don't know about that personally because I don't code. However, I do like the way it does provide output uh, for everyone. And at least for me uh, moving forward. And then the other thing is that they've got this Claude uh, 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 for Chrome. And I'll just show you this one here. Again, I've done a couple of videos on this one last week and the week before. Perplexity has the Comet browser where per per Perplexity is baked into it. Uh, Google last week announced uh, Gemini directly in Chrome. And now we've got um, uh, this particular one here where Anthropic has an extension for it. This is really cool because when you look at this, and again, click here to watch the video uh, on the announcement page, you've actually got now AI directly in the browser that understands what's in your browser. Uh, everything that's on that page, you can chat about it and prompt on it and work on it uh, right within the browser, not having to copy and, and move stuff around, which is really, really powerful. So that's only available for pro users right now. My understanding is it's coming to uh, everyone shortly. Now, when you go look through these announcements, the part that's always fun is, uh, you know, Frontier Intelligence, Software Engineering, SWE Bench Verified. A lot of people talk about these things and all sorts of numbers on how much better it is. I'm really not that interested in it. I really want to find out, you know, how can I actually use it so that I can do more time teaching stuff as opposed to getting ready to teach or doing stuff after I teach, whether that be doing marketing or administration or prep work, any of that things, I want to hand that off. Uh, and for me, the reason that this is different, based on the announcement and the little bit of time that I've had with it over the last 18 hours, is, uh, is this. If I think about, for an example, 
what I was doing if I was using any of the regular tools is I was treating them as uh, an employee, right? And I even did videos on this. It's really great. You know, agents, I think, over the next 400 days are going to be the real buzz in the AI space for the teaching uh, or education uh, businesses because we can hand off some of these tasks to these other agents that work on our behalf, these AI employees. Uh, and the example that always comes into play is, you know, if I look here on the screen again, another video, is that if you have someone uh, as your email marketing employee, you say, hey, create an email marketing campaign or create a follow-up emails or someone is a sales copy agent and you say, hey, write sales copy about this. Or maybe it's someone who does the prep work and says, create a lesson plan for this or create a use case example for this. Uh, maybe it is about financing or customer support. You get the idea. You have a bunch of employees that you're giving these tasks to, which is super promising. But the part that's different here, and it's really outlined in this little part where I'm looking on the video here, is what they've done is they've stepped up one level here. And I think of it in this particular way. Instead of having one AI employee that is not trained by me, I'm just saying here's the task and I'm trying to give it a prompt so that it understands what I want. I'm not just giving a prompt and then getting a response back and having to vet the prompt. I now have Claude 4.5, which understands the context of how all of these agents work together. So think of it this way. If I now have a senior employee, someone who can manage the project and knows how each of these pieces fit together and what kind of content that each pieces need to be able to complete the project. So I don't want to call it a manager. I want to think of it more as a senior employee. And if I have a senior employee, they know a bunch of things that my new employees don't. They know, for example, how I like my work presented. They know the way that I expect things done. Not only for me personally, they understand my business. They understand, hey, what makes you different? What are the other assets that you've used in the past? What are all of the things that are important to you? Why have you done things the way that you wanted? If I'm just giving it to a first-time employee to do one task, they have no memory of all of the other pieces that are in place. So what Claude 4.5 here is promising is that they now have a connection between how all of these things work in place and direct it toward a specific outcome, which is going to be really, really interesting moving forward. So I suggest that you go through and take a look at this and start playing with it. We don't have access, at least I don't anyway, I'm not a pro plan user to the extension for Chrome. Again, I've been talking about this from the perspective of a course creator, but you have to remember, if you're teaching, your students are gonna have this baked into their browser. If they're using Chrome, at some point, they're gonna have the AI or uh, Claude in their browser. Uh, so, you know, start thinking outside of the box how you're gonna use that. This is the other thing that they announced. And again, I don't have access to it, but go watch the video here. They've got a research tool. It's called Imagine with Claude. Now, this one is going to be exciting for us as creators because this is kind of like Opal and N8N and Vibe Coding, all of these ones put together, but an open desktop. And the example that they're using here is that this is a free form vibe where you kind of kind of just put ideas together and see what you can come up with in terms of applications or AI applications that you can use while you're teaching or the work that you need to be done. Uh, and then um, Claude generates, this is a part here, uh, generate software on the fly, no functionality is predetermined, no code is predetermined. So you just see Claude doing all of this work based on the vibing that you're doing, not saying I have to connect this to this to do that. You don't need to map anything out. It's just getting some ideas and kind of moving them forward. So what are you going to see when you're actually doing this or what's happening when you're actually spending time uh, playing around with it? Well, let me go open one up and uh, we'll kind of see what we can come up with here. And I'm just opening up Claude. Uh, there we go. Let's do this one here. Uh, and I did some, I did, obviously, I did a little bit of work with it starting off uh, to make sure that I understood how it works, what the real changes were. Let me get rid of this here. So 
I was playing around and just trying to figure out, you know, what, you know, why is it better? I asked Claude after I was playing with it, I said, why are you better for teachers and course creators? What makes you different? And I think it did sum it up. And again, we'll show you how this works. Uh, I'm actually go and play around with this yourself and see uh, if it works for you. Um, Claude says it's having a super smart teaching assistant who actually gets what you're trying to do as a course creator or a teacher. Uh, and this is interesting because they say it's when you ask to uh, simplify complex topics for beginners, it breaks things down in layers instead of dumping everything at once. It's the difference between a professor who reads from slides versus one who uses stories and builds up to an aha moment. And it really follows the teaching flow. And you'll see when you actually prompt it. Let me just see. I have a couple here a little bit down later. Is when it actually does the work. Uh, here's one here. I basically, and I'll, we'll run it again so that you can actually see it. Um, what I did is I had a CSV file that I uh, copied that was my YouTube videos or a number of my YouTube videos. And it was a CSV file. And you can see one of the things that it does here is when I just asked it to analyze the list, what it did is it did kind of three steps and it checked on the steps while it was doing with it. Many of the thinking models you just see it goes thinking and then it spits out content. But this one, the analysis was, hey, it read from it. Okay, just made sure, sorry, I screened it down. So it explored it and went through the particular content and then got unique sections. So it gives you phases. It went through and actually tells you what it actually did. After it did that, now let's look at the actual video titles to understand the content themes and went through all of those pieces there. And then finally, what it did is it reread it and then it was trying to figure out how does this all fit into place? And it gave some results here. So this is a multi-step process that it has strung together with that um, context and memory of the previous task, putting it together. So play around with this and see how this works for you. Uh, and when I did this before, I did it in ChatGPT just to see what happened. Uh, I did a file analysis on this one. I uploaded the same CSV and I said, analyze this file. And it basically gave me a file summary, sample rows, key observations, and then some next steps. So I have that one that came out just with a simple prompt. The other one that I did with Claude 4.5. And again, you can tell in the bottom right here where I'm moving my mouse, 4.5 says, okay, I'm looking at our data and I uh, need to think out loud with here because I'm seeing some interesting patterns. This is the difference between that seasoned employee that you give a big task to and saying, okay, I got the information here. What do we need to do? Where are we going? This is different than just giving a prompt and saying, go do this and come back with a result. So you have these videos. It gives you a kind of a notification here. Here's what's jumping out at me. What's going on with the uncategorized? A bunch of them are uncategorized. It does some examples with them. How do they fit in? What are the next steps? I'm seeing three different U's in this content. So it's looking at the titles and figuring out what's unique about them. How does this actually apply? Uh, the campus terminology, question three. Uh, what do you want me to do next? So I need your input first. So if you are in this space where you're actually having to do more then just say, give me an answer, and you actually want to be a creator and provide a knowledge transfer that is thoughtful and has an analogy running through it, this might be the tool for you to consider. Now, do I have all the answers for it? No, I've just been playing around with it for eight, uh, 18 hours. Is it something to definitely check out? Yeah, sure. If you're in that customer-facing stuff, and you want to have someone that is a little more thoughtful on how it is that you teach, trying Claude 4.5 Sonnet is an absolute uh, necessity. Because I think as we're rolling forward here with all of this stuff toward agents and avatars, our ability to hand off stuff to these multiple agents and have them managed so that we're freed up to do what we actually love to do, this is part is a real bonus for us as teachers and course creators. So if you like this, go play around with it. My name is James. It's trainingsites.io. Put a comment below. Let me know what's going on. 
give me a thumbs up uh, and like it. And of course, if you want to start, build and uh, grow your education business, make sure to go to trainingsites.io forward slash join and get the community. And I will put all of my notes, everything that I've done here, including this video uh, and uh, some additional prompts or cheat sheets that go with it so you can grow your education business. Now, if you haven't done these before, I spend uh, usually one or two of these a day. And I want to show you something that I'm going to be covering one of the next videos. And that is how you can actually connect your WordPress site to Claude and have access to it with Sonnet 4.5. So I'm actually connected to the WordPress site, my privately branded campus, which is what we do. I've actually got Claude connected to it and I can work directly on my campus from right in Claude. So hope you enjoy this. Take care. Expect the best. We'll be back shortly with another great video for you.